Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm recording this on 4-12-2024. I'm going to be reading Para Duma, Chapter 5, from Maimonides. All of those involved in offering the red heifer from the beginning to the end become impure and impart impurity to their garments as long as they are involved in its being offered. This concept is derived as follows. With regard to the one who slaughters the heifer and one who casts the cedar wood into its belly, Numbers chapter 19, verse 7 states, the priest shall launder his clothes and wash his flesh. And with regard to the one who burns it, a bit, verse 8 states, the one who burns it shall launder his clothes. And a, a bid 10 states, the one who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall launder. These verses teach that all those involved in offering it from the beginning until the end impart impurity to their clothes, must immerse themselves and wait for nightfall to regain purity according to the scriptural law. One who guards the heifer at the time it is being offered imparts impurity to his garments according to the rabbinic law. This is a decree lest he move one of its limbs. Whenever the Torah states with regard to impurity, one shall launder his clothes. It does not come merely to teach that the clothes on a person are impure. Instead, it teaches that every garment or implement that this impure person will touch while he is still in contact with the object that imparted impurity to him becomes impure. After he separates himself from the object that imparts impurity to him, he does not impart impurity to his garments or to other objects. What is implied? A person who carries an animal carcass imparts impurity to the clothes he is wearing and to any implement he touches as long as he is carrying it. They are considered as a first-degree derivative of impurity. Similarly, the one who carries the animal carcass is considered as impure as the first degree. If he sees contact with the object that imparted ritual impurity, casting away the animal carcass, he remains impure to the first degree as before. If, however, he touches an implement or a garment, he does not impart impurity to it, for a derivative of ritual impurity does not impart impurity to implements as we explained in the beginning of this text. Similarly, I'm sorry, similar laws apply to all types of impurity, analogous to that imparted by an animal carcass. Similarly, with regard to all those involved in the offering, the red heifer, if they touch a garment or an implement at the time they are slaughtering or burning the heifer, it becomes impure. After such, an individual cease the task involved with it. However, even though he has not yet immersed, he does not impart impurity to an implement that he touches because he is merely a derivative impurity. The red heifer itself does not impart impurity to a person or to implements that touch it. It is only those involved in its offering who become impure must immerse themselves and impart impurity to their garments as long as they are involved in its offering. When does the above apply? When the red heifer was burnt as prescribed, if, however, it was disqualified, those involved in offering it are pure. If a disqualifying factor occurred during its slaughter, it does not cause a person's garments to become impure. If a disqualifying factor factor occurs during its sprinkling of the blood, those who were involved with its offering before it was disqualified impart impurity to their garments. Those involved after its disqualification do not impart impurity to their garments. When the collection of its ashes were completed, anyone who, who is involved with it for example, with the division of its ashes or with setting them aside for safekeeping or who touches it is pure. These principles do not apply to the red heifer alone, but also to all the sin offerings of bulls and goats that are burnt. 
one who burns them and parts impurity to his garments while he is burning them until they are reduced to ashes. For behold, with regards to the bull and the goat burned on Yom Kippur, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 28 states, the one who burns them shall launder his garments. According to the oral tradition, it was taught that this is a general rule applying to those who burn sac sacrificial offerings, teaching that they impart impurity to their garments until the offerings were reduced to ash. When does the above apply? When no disqualifying factor occurred and they are burned in the ash heap that per as prescribed. If, however, they were disqualified in the temple courtyard, they were burned there like disqualified offerings, and the one who burns them is ritually pure. Similarly, one who is involved with those offerings after they have been reduced to ashes does not impart impurity to his garments. Who is considered as one who burns it? Anyone who helps in burning it. For example, one who turns over the meat, one who pl places wood upon it, one who fans the fire, one who stirs the coals so that the fire will burn, and the like. In contrast, one who kindles the flame and one who builds the arrangement are pure. According to the oral tradition, it was taught that one who carries the bulls and the goats that are burnt to transport them to the ash heap to burn them is ritually impure and imparts impurity to his garments according to the scriptural law as long as he is involved in transporting them. To regain purity, he is required to immerse himself in a mikvah and wait until nightfall like the one who sends the goat to uh, Zazil. The latter imparts impurity to all the garments and the implements that he touches that are on him throughout the time he is involved in sending the goat to its destination as a bid verse 26 states the one who sends the goat to azazel shall launder his garments from when do those who carry the bulls and the goats that are burnt impart impurity to their garments when they take them out of the temple courtyard if they carried them with poles and some of those carrying them left the, the walls of the temple courtyard and others did not depart. Those who depart impart impurity to their garments. Those who do not yet depart do not impart impurity to their garments until they depart. If they depart and then return to the, the temple courtyard and transfer the carcass to others, the others who carry them in the temple courtyard are pure until they take them out. If a person who's standing outside the courtyard and are pulling the poles on which the carcass are hanging from the courtyard after they were returned there, he is considered as being impure of doubtful status since the sacrificial animals have already been taken outside and the one pulling them are standing outside. When does the person who sends the go to Az Azal Azazil impart impurity to his garments from the time he departs Jerusalem until he pushes the goat off the cliff to Azazil. After he pushes it off the cliff, if he touches implements or garments, they are pure. When an entity, whether a person, an, an implement, food, or liquid, touches the bodies of the bulls and the goats that are burnt, even after they have been taken out of the temple courtyard, Everything is pure. Similarly, if they were touch, if they would touch the goat sent to Azazel itself, while it is being carried there, they would be pure. For these sacrificial animals impart impurity only to one who is involved with carrying them, as indicated in Leviticus chapter sixteen, verse twenty-eight. The one who burns them shall launder his garments. One who touches, by contrast, is pure. That concludes chapter 5 of Para Aduma. Please subscribe to my channels. I have three channels on YouTube. I have Bright Town, BitChute, and Rumble. All the links are in the description of this video. Make sure you subscribe to all six channels. Also, if you could help support my work, Please donate on my website. It's the-studio-reykjavik.com. You can donate through Stripe, PayPal, or buy me a coffee. 
on the home page of the website at the very bottom. In addition, you can help support my work by being a paid member on my Patreon channel. That way you are helping support my news coverage. Thank you for listening and thank you for your continued support.